I'd just like to ask if I can speak without the microphone. Can people hear me if I speak without the microphone? Thank you. That's the, one of the advantages of being a teacher. You kind of learn how to throw your voice a little bit. Um, okay, first of all, I'd like to say thanks um, for inviting me to speak and also to say that I am uh, a member or a, a supporter of the Tower Hamlets Hoops organisation, Hands Off Our Public Services, and also involved in a little bit in Tower Hamlets Uncut. Um, but I'm by no means the official spokesperson or voice of either of those. Um, I've come really because I thought I would give you um, some information and some um, details about what sorts of things we've been up to since um, Tony came along to um, Oxford House down the road uh, in September last year uh, and helped us to launch Tower Hamlet's Hoop. So it's, it's great that he's back again today. Um, we're one of thousands of anti-cuts groups that sprang up um, after the um, coalition uh, condemn government came into power. And um, we, uh, we didn't swallow this lie, as I'm sure most people in the room didn't at the time from the Tories, that we're all in this together. And we know that the banks caused the, the crisis, the financial crisis, and uh, while um, they got a tr £1.3 trillion pound um, bailout to save their jobs, the Tories are now trashing public services, jobs, pay and pensions. And we knew that the Tories would turn on Tower Hamlets and that's why we got ready early to start fighting cuts um, because Tower Hamlets has a history, a proud history of struggle and resistance. Um, it's a multicultural community and it has um, uh, had a Labour Council for a long time. Um, 70 million plus pounds worth of cuts over the next three years, 500 council jobs to go, the complete deletion of the junior youth service and 2.7 million pounds worth of children's centres cuts were the headlines. There are masses every, every week. If you buy the East London Advertiser, if you pick up the paper, you will see more cuts, more groups being affected, voluntary groups, small groups, children's centres. There's one in the paper this week that says that there's um, a, a children's centre in Bethel Green called Little Oaks, and while the council is saying that the children's centre is open, the parents of babies and children who've been having classes and activities there are turning up and saying, but there are no classes and activities. So great, the centre's open, but there's nothing doing. Um, this is an ideological war on the poor. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and nowhere is it clearer than it is in Tower Hamlets. We've got the opulence and the greed and the wealth of the gleaming towers of glass and steel in Canary Wharf actually overshadowing schools in this borough where 80 to 90% of the children are on free school meals. In February, Tower Hamlets was named as one of the two boroughs in this country with the highest rate of child poverty in the UK. 27% of children in this borough, one in four children, um, grow up in poverty, according to Save the Children. And what is the government's response to that? They're cutting um, children's services. I work as a teacher of the deaf. Tower Hamlets has three times the national average of deaf children. In, in, this, in this borough. And that's not a coincidence. It's because partly of poverty. It's because of ill health. It's because of poor housing. And what have they done? They've cut one teacher of the deaf job. They've cut 10 teachers in this borough who work with children with special needs. Um, they've also, uh, Crisis, the charity, has just warned in May that more young adults in the 25 to 35 bracket in Tower Hamlets will lose their homes through housing benefit changes than in the rest of the country. So we know that there is a need for organisations like, like Hoops. And what we do in Hoops is we bring together lots of different organisations. There's all kinds of people, all kinds of activists, students, teachers, NHS workers, council workers, and I would urge anybody in this room who isn't already a member or a supporter of Hoops to please um, sign a petition, or not a petition, sorry, a list that's being passed around a bit later on. Um, and make sure that you, you um, become part of, of the organisation. You don't have to turn up every week to a meeting. People dip in and out, and that's one of the strengths of Hoops. So we've got unions, we've got, um, we've got tenants, we've got campaigns like uh, Keep Our NHS Public involved, we've um, had marches, 
um, and we've had lobbies and we've been to Mulberry Place a few times to speak to councillors. Um, one of the uh, organisations that's kind of um, come out of hoops in a way is Tower Hamlets Uncut, um, which, uh, which is led by another teacher actually who's, who's in this room, Liam. Um, in March, on the day that Bob Diamond uh, was awarded his £9 million bonus, 15 of us, led by Liam, decided to go and pay Barclays headquarters a little visit. It's, a, it's a, got a little special place in our heart, Barclays, because it's, um, it's in Tower Hamlets, it's in Canary Wharf, um, and uh, we thought Bob Diamond might like to, to see us. We, we popped over there. We thought it might be quite difficult to get into um, Barclays headquarters, but actually, amazingly, it turned out easier than it was to get into the town hall, Mulberry Place, when we'd been there for lobbies. Because we actually just walked in there. They weren't expecting us. Um, and we managed to stay in there for some time and get national coverage. We, we scared all the bankers who were coming out about five o'clock and they were all redirected through the building um, so they could get on their own personal tube trains, I think. Um, and uh, we made a bit of a fuss. We talked, uh, we, we, we chanted a chant which was Barclays Bank pays no tax, Tower Hamlets gets the axe. Um, and the police arrived and they were actually quite supportive and uh, they let us stay there for a little bit longer. And you can see all the footage of that on YouTube. Um, Liam also did a little guided tour in April um, of all the tax dodging firms in Canary Wharf. We drew about 100 people to that one and lots and lots of media and one of the companies that we visited and Liam told us all about was Allen and Overy which is um, well they make money out of other people's misery basically they're um, a, a, a corporate law firm that buy into third world debt and make their money out of that and they interestingly enough are involved in a local school uh, a local school which wants to become an academy mm. Bethnal Green Technology College and Tower Hamlets Uncut will be taking some action against that this Saturday. Um, if you get yourself onto the Hoops email list, we can tell you a bit more about that, but it's, um, there's going to be some people meeting up at 12 noon this Saturday uh, at Bethnal Green Tube, I believe. Um, okay, just to, uh, to start winding up, um, it's not just uh, people who are already involved in campaigns and unions, it's not just people who are already um, involved in organisations. Um, that come and join hoops and get involved. It's people who are um, tenants, people who are just ordinary residents, people who perhaps work outside of the borough or don't work. Um, and we've had a lot of success with very small estate-based meetings. Some of the best meetings have been in Whitechapel and Poplar and Bethnal Green, just a few people chatting about how the cuts are affecting them and what can they do about it. And we had a, a really good anti-cuts fair in, uh, on June the 11th, a kind of workshop style um, activity uh, based um, event where we spent the day making banners, talking about housing cuts, talking about youth and education and also we launched a new film which um, is available on YouTube again called Hoops the Movie where young people from the Cranbrook estate talked about the effect of the cuts on them and it's very moving because they are talking about how how they, when they have no youth centre, when they have nowhere to go and nothing to do, are going to end up on the streets causing trouble for other people, uh, causing trouble for other families on, on the estates. Um, so they know um, what effect the cuts are having on them and they want to do something about it. So what next? Well, first of all, I'd like to ask people who live or work in Tower Hamlets who can do to join up today. Um, I'd like to say that if... Uh, if you live and work here, sign up. We stand against every cut to every job and every service in Tower Hamlets. We stand against pay, uh, cuts to pay and cuts to pensions, and we will obviously be supporting uh, the strike of teachers and public service workers on June the 30th. Thanks. been said about ropes being tied together and people coming together and making making um, themselves stronger actually making themselves feel stronger and I think one of the strengths as I was saying before about about hoops 
and to some extent about Tower Hamlets Uncut and the UK Uncuts um, organisation is that um, it does involve lots of people who've done things before. I'm sure there's lots of people in this room who've been involved in direct action, they've been perhaps occupied something, they, or they've been on strike, they've been on a march, they've been on a demonstration, they've done something, and afterwards they know how much stronger they feel afterwards. You know, it just makes everybody feel more confident to do something else next time. And, and I would like to remind everybody, I'm sure most people are aware, that there are an awful lot of people around us, around this building, in, in, in the housing around us, who've never done those things, uh, and they need to. Uh, and those are the people who don't have a voice. Those are the people that I think the next thing Hoops should be doing, apart from fighting academies and you know supporting the pensions, one of the things that we ought to be doing is going onto estates with just a table and a chair and sitting down and asking people to come to us and talk to us about how the cuts are affecting you. What's the worst thing happening for you at the moment? What can we do to support you? Because some people are not confident enough or interested enough to come to a big meeting like this. And I think we can do that on a very small scale and build things that way. And so I would suggest that everybody in this room just contributes a little bit to that by either talking to another parent or another person in their area um, and, and, uh, and get involved and get them involved so everybody feels stronger and all the ropes are tied together. <laughs>